You are watching Carlisle Speaks Wall Street, and um, I am trying to install a new email client. I used to use Thunderbird, but uh, Thunderbird is giving me a little bit of a problem accessing my Gmail accounts. Uh, there's a lot of information online about how to fix the issue. I've tried the solutions, nothing really working. I don't really have time for it. So I'm kind of thinking, you know what? Uh, let me just bail and use another client. So I did some research, I went to this website, uh, these are the top free clients, um, open source clients that are out there. So I was going to actually use Mailbird, but I think Mailbird only allows you to use three email accounts. I have over a dozen, so not going to work for me. So anyway, I decided on this client, it's called Welcome to Claws Mail. Well, it's called Claws Mail, not Welcome to Claws Mail. Um, so I'm going to install it and see how it goes. So let the fun begin. So let's go. I just downloaded it. Now I'm going to install Randy Executable. So it gives you a Claws-Mail-3.14.1-1.exe dash dash file. You run it, you get this, and let's do forward. So on this screen, you just enter your name, your email address, and your organization. And once we enter that, we can go to the next screen. So I'm actually going to set this up as IMAP. And I'm going to need to get the information about the server from Gmail, Gmail account. So let's go pull up the Gmail instructions. So now you're looking at the inner workings of my email account. Um, and if you go into your Gmail account, you'll see this little gear icon. If you click on that, that's going to allow you to access the configuration. Unfortunately, when I zoom in this much, I can't scroll, which is a little bit annoying. I can arrow down, but you guys can't see anything. I can't see anything either. So let's zoom it down a little bit it's a little bit better there all right so you can't see it but there's a settings right here I'm gonna click on that and now you're gonna get this menu across the top so we're gonna go to right here see it says uh, let's zoom it down just a little bit more see it says uh, inbox account and import filters and it says uh, pop IMAP so let's click on that and from here if we scroll down we can see all the settings so let's zoom this out a little bit okay so you can see IMAP is enabled you have to make sure that IMAP is enabled for sure the default I believe is disabled so it's enabled right now and then we also want to look at the configuration options if we look down here, see it says configuration instructions. Now there's configuration instructions for IMAP and for POP. So here's the POP up here. So to see the POP section, POP is enabled, right? And then it says configure instructions for POP. If you look down, then you see IMAP. If you go all the way down to the bottom, you're going to see uh, configuration instructions for that, for Outlook, Thunderbird, iPhone. So if we click on that, we'll get to this page, which shows us the settings that are required, which I went through for some, th ah, well, Thunderbird. for Thunderbird, I went through these instructions, but they didn't really seem to work. Anyway, um, so set up IMAP, check the IMAP is turned on. We did that already. Click settings, for da -da -da. this is what we're doing right now. Uh, in IMAP section, access section, select enable IMAP. We did that already. Basically, this whole thing is just showing you how to turn it on. We did that. The next thing is saying how to change your IMAP settings in your email client. So, this is the IMAP server. So, let's go back to here. You can specify port number. Da -da -da. It just says server address. It doesn't really say inbound or outbound or any of that good stuff. So I'm just going to assume they're referring to that. I'm at gmail.com. My username and password. 
we're going to use SSL, which is referenced in the instructions here. As you can see, it requires SSL, inbound, outbound, right? So I'm going to turn that on. And that should be it for the screen. So I'm just going to do my username and password. And my username would be my email address, I believe. Another clue for you as far as inbound versus outbound. Notice that the last screen we're in said uh, receiving mail. So that would be inbound. So our assumption was correct. Now you notice it says sending mail. So that would be outbound. So now we need to grab the outbound server, which is this guy. So let's go ahead and add that here. And use authentication, SMT username and password. Uh, empty to use the same as receive. Yes, it's the same authentication as receive, so we're going to leave that blank. Uh, yes, we need to use SSL. And let's go to the next screen. Configuration finished. So, the moment of truth, and the question is, will this work? Okay, look at that. Well, you can't see it yet. And it's not moving for some reason. I can't, the window's open on another screen and I can't move it over. It's kind of weird. I'm gonna have to bring you guys over to the other screen where it's stuck. So let's see what's going on. So this is it on my other screen and it's stuck. I can't, I can't minimize, maximize. I can't drag the window. It's just kind of stuck here. And there's no email. I can't get email either. It almost looks like there's a, a prompt open, but there isn't. And if there was, this these buttons wouldn't work, right? See how it's mousing over? I can't really do much, so I'm going to have to kill this and see what happened. Okay, we didn't have to kill it because apparently there was a pop-up on another screen, even though it was responding to the mouse. Still, it was, it was being held hostage by this. It says certificate for IMAP Gmail is unknown. Do you want to accept it? So let's go ahead and accept and save and see if this actually works. Aha! And I think it's working. Seems to be bringing in my email. Well, at least it's trying to. So, um,. It says, oh, it is doing something. It says 9,000 of 11,000 on the bottom. I guess I can quickly show you guys that. See that down there? Okay, so it looks like it's done, and there's my email. So I think we're good to go. Looks pretty good. Let's see if we can uh, look at the configuration and see what our, our options as far as configuration. Let's see, preferences for current account. Let's do that. So if we go to the Compose options here, it looks like you can set up a signature, which is nice. And automatically set the following addresses, CC and BCC. So maybe all of your emails has these things as a default. Spell check dictionaries, you can choose a default dictionary. So I guess we want English US. Would be good. And let's see what other options we have. There's templates. Nice. So you can do email templates, reply templates, forward templates. Oh, this is going to come in handy for sure. Me like it. Uh, let's see. Privacy. So privacy system, none. PGP, MIME, or inline. Always sign messages. Always encrypt. So those are options there. SSL, we're using that. Uh, advanced options folder put sent messages in this folder put queued messages in this folder put draft messages here so you can set that up you can also download apparently plugins um so i'll have to look online and see what kind of plugins are available but that seems to be it i don't see anything about sound alerts so i might not be using this very long because i definitely want something that has sound alerts for sure i want to be able to be alerted with certain sounds when emails come in. So, create filter rule. Hmm. Collect addresses, address book. So, let's see, create filter rule maybe. Mm, 
filter rule on from. And let's say... Messages from me, me at me.com, me, it's all about me. Um, actions, let's define the action. So the action is going to be action. Move, copy, delete, execute, color label, recent score, change score, set score, I don't know what that is, change score. I don't know what that is. Oh, you can, you can score, I guess, emails. I don't know what that's about. Tags, threads. I don't say anything about sounds. So, we may need to look for another client. But one thing that I generally like to do as a final test when you install a new email client like this is just because you've installed it, it looks good, you see emails coming in, doesn't mean it actually works. What you will. Some of it works, obviously, but what you want to check is you want to make sure you can actually send and receive emails. Now, obviously, I've gotten emails from the server. They're all coming down, but if I send an email to myself, does it show up? Can I send an email from this program to somewhere else? Does that work and does it get received? So that's like one of the final tests that I would do just to make sure everything is good to go. Um, but that's it. We've set it up. It uh, looks like it's good to go. And now I just need to go hunting around for another client that actually has uh, supports sound, which would be nice. You are watching Carlisle Speaks Wall Street. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and click on that like button. Really appreciate it. And subscribe and click on the bell icon after you do that so you can get notifications. Otherwise, you're not going to know when I post new videos. Anyway, have a great day. Thanks for watching and see you soon.